What is going on YouTube? SciGuy29 coming at you here from the beautiful Cardboard Pub in my basement. Glad you could join us tonight. Got a nice little addition. Got a really small hat on. Got my White Sox hat on. Being a Twins fan, it's hard to do it. It's historical significance for many reasons. I'll get into that in a minute. Got some Chicago, the band, playing on the radio. And tonight's beer is Big Eddie. Easy Eddie from Big Grove Brewery. This is in Solon or Iowa City, Iowa. Same thing. Uh, this is a, they call it a fresh and juicy hazy IPA. Let's go ahead and take a look at it here. This won a gold medal at the 2019 Open Beer Championship. You can see it is a very light color. Especially for me on this channel. I've never had it. Uh, 6 point ABV. Cheers. Definitely a little fruity, not my thing, but hey, it's an easy drinker this time of year. Starting to warm up a little bit, not a bad. Be a nice one after a little mow in the yard or something, so. Hmm. Well, that's good. Well, tonight's cards, um, story about the hat, let's go to that. So I bought this hat uh, the last year that the original Comiskey Park was open, and uh my dad and I took off uh, the first weekend of August. It was my birthday. Wanted to go out. We'd been out when my cousin Dan played for the Royals out there. Saw a whole series. It was really, really exciting. Loved, loved, loved that stadium. Everything about it, except for where it was located. But loved the atmosphere. Just lo it, it screamed baseball history, and I absolutely loved it. I couldn't have gone there enough. I have not been to New Comiskey and don't plan on going really uh, not saying I won't but it's certainly uh, not being planned at this time um, we were supposed to see Nolan Ryan pitch uh, we took off on a Friday afternoon uh, Nolan Ryan was supposed to pitch the Saturday game uh, we were just going for Saturday and we took off and it started raining Friday night uh, got rained out Friday night Ended up playing a doubleheader on Saturday. Or no, doubleheader on Sunday. So they bumped Nolan Ryan back a day. So he actually threw on Sunday in one in the first game of the doubleheader. And we saw somebody else play. Now the cool thing was, it was the rookie year, I believe, of one Mr. Frank Thomas. And being this is episode number 35 of Crafts and Cards, I thought, why not show some Frank Thomas cards? Um, another side note, Chicago the band, I actually saw them in a concert. It was one of the very first concerts I uh, attended, and uh, it was a really good show. I was back when I was like a freshman in high school, eighth grader, somewhere in there. Great show. Uh, I don't know how we did it. We talked to our church youth group sponsor to taking us to this Chicago concert. So here's 20 of us loaded up in these five cars, and away we went to the Chicago concert. It was a lot of fun, though. So uh, get a quick drink here. Great horn section there by Chicago. One of the best ever. Um, now these cards are not high-end. Not going to knock your socks off. Nothing's graded. But they kind of epitomize uh, when Frank Thomas played and kind of what was going on in the card market. And there's some random. This is a, a dugout access. And I don't even know where these came from. But this is the front of the card. You know, great Chicago. Now, I call these cards the school toilet paper of baseball cards. Uh, and, and most of you know what I mean by that is not much to it. Okay? They're not bad looking cards. They're just, from a from an actual standpoint, they're terrible. Now, on the back of this card, teammate Mike Cameron says, Frank's a happy-go-lucky guy. He's not superstitious, but he does use a different bat in every game. That's because he hits the ball too hard and dents them. As far as hand-eye coordination, he's the best. He's the most impressive hitter I've seen. And uh, it was great because that day we went to the game on that Saturday. Uh, we got there really early, got tickets, went down, and got to see BP from down close. And 
to see that how massive he was compared to everybody else uh, on the field was really impressive. Um, this is a Donruss uh, hit list insert. Great pose there. Bet you that was a really productive swing, I'm guessing. But he was uh, he was actually third in batting average at 329. Dog's going to get involved here, so I apologize for that. This was one of my absolute favorite sets, and this is from uh, 99. This is the 99 ovation from Upper Deck. Stop. Go. But I love these cards. They have that, the baseball look, and they have a really good feel to them. They're a little thicker. Got that shine right there in the middle. It's just kind of a, a cool-looking card. Uh, next, we have a Post Serial uh, 2001 Collector Series. Tops actually made these. It was their 50th year. You got the little logo up there in the, in the upper corner. But there again, these are kind of that same... Uh, same feel, not much to these. It's amazing it's in good of shape being crushed in a cereal box. Uh, a little Pinnacle Summit action. And I've shown some of these before. Uh, good looking card. Just a neat design kind of coming out of the border there. There's the back of the card. Really cool stats in the back, how they how they set that up by month. Uh, this is a 95 Donruss. Love the Shine on the sides with a great picture. Really nice backs of the cards as well. A couple different action shots. Not much for stats. Well, then we have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful 92 Donruss. Not put in the top loader very straight. Sorry about that. Better picture in the back. Um, career highlights. Lead majors in on-base percentage. Dude had a 457 on base percentage in 91. He was only the 38th player in history to reach base 300 times in a season. It's not a bad little thing. Also led the White Sox in home runs and RBIs. Had three different five RBI games in 91. So uh, kind of a cool card there. First baseman. Spent a lot of time DHing. Here we have a, oh, what is this? Midpoint analysis. I'm going to guess this was a Series 2 card. Means it's not, well, I don't know. I don't know what the hell this is, but it's a midpoint analysis. Frank Thomas. There you go. Uh, next, we have a 1995 King Bee's Beef Jerky Disc. Big old smile like you, you just would expect to see from Frank. These came in a little tin of beef jerky that was meant to look like chewing tobacco. Uh, next we have the Fleer Tradition from uh, I can't even read that. My God. 89? 99? One of the other. 99 I think. Fleer Traditions. A lot of those same poses because that's what he was kind of known for. And uh Last but certainly not least, uh, we have a uh, upper deck play ball. And I'm not sure what years these came out. It was either late 90s, early 2000s. But I love this set. I wish I would have bought more. Um, you got Big Hurt down there on the bottom. So kind of a cool, just a basic card, but it's still a... I, I kind of love the art gallery, artist rendition kind of card. So hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, remember... Sci Guy says, collect what you love, love what you collect, and drink what you love. Till next time, cheers.